in the name of the Lord. We bless, bless Lord, the holy city. We bless her unto being the city of God. We bless her, Lord, unto being the city of light, the city of the revelation, God, unto all peoples. We bless Jerusalem in the name of the Lord. We bless those in authority there. We pray for the Lord as you commanded us to. And we believe the Lord to work in ways that shall amaze us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We bless you in the name of the Lord. And we bless Jerusalem and all the people that love you and serve you there. We bless her unto great increase even in these days, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Everybody feeling wonderful today? Amen, Amen. hallelujah, feeling blessed, blessed of the Lord, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I want to read this morning from Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53, and I'll begin, perhaps I'll start with verse 10. Shirley, sit over by Brother Walker and share your Bible with him. That's good. We're glad, we're glad he's here with us this morning. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 53 <clears throat> Verse 10, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, 
and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he hath poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Verse 12, Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Hallelujah. He shall divide the, the spoil with the strong. Hallelujah. I know already you're beginning to take uh, sort of your 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 spiritual uh, um, uh, checking your spiritual biceps and muscles uh, to find out if you're really strong. I, I don't think that we need to worry too much about that uh, from this standpoint that uh, the Lord is speaking here. I believe He's speaking concerning the praisers. It's interesting because in Psalm chapter uh, 8, I want to read from Psalm chapter 8. There's a, a wonderful portion of scripture. Psalm 8 verse 2. I want you to see this connection. Psalm 8 verse 2 <clears throat> says, Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. So what is the Lord? What was it prophesied? It was prophesied that out of the mouths of babes and sucklings that strength was ordained. Amen. Hallelujah. And that the strength was ordained to still the enemy and the avenger praise the Lord now Jesus is referring to this verse and quoting it and we find in Matthew chapter 21 verse 16 that the Lord is quoting this verse remember when they tried to get the people to be quiet and Jesus told them to let them alone and let them continue to praise the Lord and this is what Jesus said in verse 16 and he said unto him hearest thou what these say and Jesus saith unto them yea have ye never read out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected Praise, hallelujah. Jesus is giving us the full understanding of what that ordained strength is. This ordained strength is to still the avenger and the enemy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And Jesus says it is praise coming forth out of the mouths of of babes and sucklings hallelujah when you begin to be conscious that your praise is one of the greatest tools against the enemy amen it not only blesses the heart of God but your praise also stills the enemy and the avenger amen hallelujah you say well how can I stop the enemy in his tracks how can I keep the, the, the enemy at bay you can still him by praising the Lord hallelujah you just begin to praise the Lord and you'll find that it stills the enemy and the avenger now the Lord is speaking now and I want to go back to uh, Isaiah 53 and I'll just tell you a little bit uh, how that the Lord spoke to me from Isaiah 53 it was a number of years ago. We, of course, have been, been blessed that for many years we worship the Lord on Mount Zion in Jerusalem. And God led us into a praise ministry in which night after night we would gather and lift up our voices extensively in praise. 
this was in the day when perhaps people were not praising the Lord quite as much as folks are moving into uh, the realm of praise in these days. But we would sow praises to the heavens uh, and the Lord would sow uh, the, the victory and the answer uh, and the deliverance back in the earth as we were praising him. Around this time, I noticed that the nature of our prayer meeting was changing. We used to have prayer meeting on Friday and Saturday morning in a chapel on the road to Bethlehem. It was a little Greek Orthodox chapel that we loaned for, uh, borrowed for Friday and Saturday morning because the church that we were using on Mount Zion was uh, uh, open for tourists and pilgrims to come all throughout the day to see where Peter denied the Lord. And uh, so we couldn't use the church in the daytime. We could only use it at night. So we had this little chapel in Bethlehem on the road to Bethlehem. And we had a signboard outside and it said, Pentecostal prayer meeting from 8 o'clock to 12. Well, that was fine. But what was happening, we began to notice... Uh, we were not praying in the sense we used to pray. You know, we, we tend to have in our understanding what prayer really is, getting down there and, well, we Pentecostals say we bombard heaven. We pray through. You know, all the wonderful uh, verbs that we have concerning prayer. A and we weren't doing too much of that anymore. We weren't, we were so, uh, coming into the meeting in this flow of praise was coming from the depth of our soul and we were singing to the Lord and suddenly the Lord would speak to us about a nation and, and uh, we'd begin to rejoice in the victory of God for that nation and we were noticing that we were not uh, we just were not doing it like we used to do and you know what happens when God begins to bring in the new those of us that have always done the old, we're the ones that get nervous. It's not the new people coming in because they don't know any better. Amen. But we're the ones that get nervous because uh, we're not doing it like we've always done it. And I almost, I'd walk past the signboard after the service and I'd get a little embarrassed. I mean, I'd look back on eight, four hours. We hadn't said a prayer uh, in the sense that we used to. We hadn't gotten in there and bombarded heaven. And yet we came out with a sense of the victory of God. We came out with a sense that, that God had done great things in Jerusalem and among his people, that he was doing great things among the nations of the world. All of this was, was very evident as we would come out of the meeting. And around that time, Brother Ed Miller who was involved in the, was a major part of the Argentine revival. He's written the book, Thy God Reigns, and, and edited numerous books out of the revival in Argentina. He passed by Jerusalem, and he says, I like what's happening here. And he said, I want you to go to the churches that I consider to be the greatest praise churches in America. Would you be willing to do that? Well... Up until that time, I only came home for camp meeting. And I'd never preached in any other church in America other than here at camp. But I said, if you think I could be a blessing, I'd be very happy to go. And so he arranged this marvelous tour from Hawaii all the way across America. And I went to the churches that he considered to be the greatest praise churches in America. And when I got there, I began to... Be conscious because you get to the first place and people are asking a certain type of question. And you get to the next place and they're asking the same question. And by the time you get across the country, you have a little feel of what is the question in the hearts of people. And the one question that were people were asking, this was before the subject of travail and intercession came in so strongly... They were asking me concerning intercession and travail. And I said this to them. I said, well, 
If you had asked me this question two months ago, I was an authority. But I said, God's doing something different. I said, I'm not quite sure what he's doing. But I said, he's doing it different. Amen. He, he's doing it in a different way. Amen. Hallelujah. We've got to be conscious that when God's moving on to flow in whatever he's doing and flow into how he's doing it. Amen. And I said, I'm just not quite sure what he's doing. But I said, you know, our prayer meetings, we're getting to the place we're a little embarrassed with our sign that says prayer meeting. I said, we're not. It's more of a, a singing and rejoicing and thanksgiving meeting than it is a prayer meeting but of course isn't thanksgiving prayer and isn't praise prayer in the technical sense it is I came here for the opening of camp and it was communion Sunday and the Lord spoke to me to turn to Isaiah 53 to preach and as I began to read Isaiah 53 I saw these words, he shall see the travail of his soul and be satisfied. And for the first time I saw that travail was in the atonement. Just as salvation and healing are in the atonement that because he travailed, I don't need to travail, amen. I can reach out and appropriate it by faith. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, if this is so, then what do I do to appropriate it? You know, we always feel that there's some way to appropriate that which God is saying to us. He said, keep on reading. Well, we all know that the chapter headings are made just so that we can find our place in the Bible. So I kept on reading. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud. Thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, strengthen thy stakes, for thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left and thy seed shall inherit the nations and make the desolate cities to be inhabited and when I read that sing hallelujah I got so excited hallelujah God wants to bring an ease into the body of Christ that we don't know I don't know why it is that when God wants to bring ease we always want to go back and do something in which we feel that the effort of the flesh and the efforts that we have made in prayer somehow if we get down and bombard heaven and begin to, to, to just pray through we feel like we've touched God but there's a realm that you reach in and touch the eternal <laughs> that realm of glory that God's bringing forth in this day we don't have to strive for it rather we strive to enter into the rest and once we've entered into that rest hallelujah we can live in that realm there may be times that the circumstances of life bring us out of it amen but we can make that extra effort to come back Back in into that rest praise the Lord just about that time someone came to visit us in Jerusalem that I respect greatly <clears throat> and they were teaching on travail in the old sense you know as a woman gets under the burden and brings forth a child that's so in the spirit that you can have these travailing pains and can you? Yes, you can. But let me say this. There are different 
formulas in the Word of God for many things. Amen. But when you have a gift, you don't need to do use some of the other formulas. Amen. Giftings bring forth an ease in ministry. Hallelujah. Amen. Before God begins to lead you in other ways of revelation, you may pray and intercede to get the mind of the Lord. And then you just come into a place in God that in praise and worship, you suddenly know the mind of God and you don't have to spend that time uh, as you did before seeking after a particular answer or a particular way because God is bringing in a day of Ease, oh hallelujah, praise the Lord. He divides the spoil with the strong, amen. He himself travailed, and because he travailed, praise the Lord, he travailed, and God the Father divided, uh, gave the spoil to him, hallelujah. He therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Hallelujah. And the only thing we need to do to come into that strength is to praise the Lord more and more. This is or praises ordain strength. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, when this sister came by that I respected greatly and taught on travail, I said, Lord, I respect this person so much. And yet I know what you've said to me. Would you just give me a little further indication? Do you just, would you just give me some little indication? About that time we had a husband and wife that were in our fellowship and <clears throat> she was going to, <clears throat> she was expecting a baby and they had been going and taking special courses and she'd been learning how to breathe and <clears throat> you know, the modern way of doing everything. <clears throat> One morning she woke up and God spoke to her. She didn't know what God was saying to me. But God spoke to her and he said, Before Zion travailed, she brought forth. She said, Lord, what do you mean by that? What do you mean before Zion travailed? She was sort of meditating on it. Later in the day, she had a little twinge in her side, in her stomach, and... Uh, her husband said, listen, we're near the maternity hospital. Why don't we stop by and just let the doctor check? Oh, she says, no, she said. She said, this is just a little, little, uh, sort of a little twitch in the side. No, let's not stop by. And they got, he said, well, I'm going to drive you by anyway. We're near, let's just drive in. So they drove in and the doctor came and examined her. And he said, the baby is coming. She says, it couldn't be. I haven't done what I'm supposed to do yet. She was waiting for all of that effort. Amen, all of that effort. She wanted to get ready with all that effort. He said, I can't help it. The baby is here just that quickly. As we say in Hebrew, chick chock the baby was there and when she told me that I said thank you Jesus hallelujah the church is still trying to get ready but we, we're going to find out the revival is going to be here and we're going to say oh but Lord I haven't I haven't done my 40 day fast yet how can you send the revival before the 40 days is up how can you send the revival before you know I've done my 12 hours of praying a day how can you send the revival before for well he's just going to do it amen hallelujah hallelujah god is bringing in a day of ease a few weeks later i was flying down to australia <clears throat> flying from hong kong to sydney i believe 
and I was on Qantas Airways, <clears throat> and I had read everything I had with me, and I began to look around for something else to read, and there was the Australian Woman's Weekly. All the wonderful recipes, how to make the clothes, how to raise the kids, all the fashions. <clears throat> and then as I'm flipping through, I, my eyes suddenly fall on this caption that says, Sing your way to a painless childbirth. And I got so excited. It was a very famous obstetrician from Paris. He says it's not the song that just comes from the mouth, but he said the song in which a woman's total being is involved, if she will sing with her spirit as well as with her mouth, said she will have a painless childbirth. Now, I know there's some of you here that think you wish you had read that years ago. Amen. But I know this. I got so excited on the plane. I said, oh, thank you, Jesus. Even in the natural, they're discovering that it's not necessary to travail, to labor, to bring forth. That there is a song. Isaiah saw it he said sing and break forth into singing hallelujah not only the singing that comes from the mouth but break forth into singing that song in which the total being is involved hallelujah and I, I'm so glad that to notice that people are singing more amen we mustn't let anybody else do our singing for us the, your, your voice and the, the skill of your voice has nothing to do with your singing unto the Lord. Amen. If you'll get carried away in song, you'll find a way of ease in the spirit in which you will automatically be enlarged. Enlarge the place of your tent because you're going to break forth on the right hand and on the left. You're going to break forth before and behind. That breaking forth is going to come. Hallelujah! It's going to come because of the breaking forth within you. Praise the Lord. When God began to show us this and we began to share it with different people, some of the folks had been going to, well, in different countries, the intercessory prayer groups are called by different names. Some countries, it's, it's the Lydia groups. Uh, other countries, they have the Esther groups. Some, but these are all intercessory prayer groups. And I remember one night, some ladies had come from South Africa. They said, oh, thank God you told us that. They said, we were beginning to an experience a change within us, but we didn't know how to handle it. And they said, because we didn't want to just go and go through the form of some of the intercessory prayer groups we'd been going to, and we began to sort of be more quiet before God, waiting for this to break forth that God was doing within us, said some of our friends, we're thinking we were backsliding. Said we didn't know how to handle what was happening. God was bringing a change within. Amen. Bringing in a day of ease. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In which God was hearing that song of the Lord was going forth from the depths of the people. A song of faith. A prophetic song. A prophetic anointing. Hallelujah. That was stilling the avenger and causing the enemy to flee away. Hallelujah. He, the psalmist says to let the high praises of God be in your mouth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And periodically we need to remind ourselves how powerful praise is and how powerful song is. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, sing. 
Thou that didst not travail, sing. Hallelujah. Sing and break forth into singing. You say, Sister Ruth, is it that easy? It's that easy. We don't need to get under the burden and travail. Oftentimes, we allow the heaviness of our mind, the anxiety of our spirit uh, to cause us uh, to miss the ease of God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You might get accused of not being serious enough. You know, we've lived in a country for 17 years that people said was going to be in war before the next day. We have seen, met at least a thousand people uh, that came by to tell us Jerusalem would be in war within the week. And we've just stood and sung our faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. We didn't weep or cry or mourn. Amen. We just sang our faith. We just declared our faith in song. There have been times that it looks sincerely like there might be war before morning. And we have declared in song this year in Jerusalem there will be peace again. And we've seen that wonderful peace of God flowing forth by the power of the Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. It's so easy to begin in the Spirit and then try to make our way perfect in the flesh. But God wants that same ease with every revival. One of the great signs of revival is song. Amen. At the Welsh revival, they sang all night. And to this day, the Welshmen are famous for their voices and their choir. But it came out of the revival spirit that went across Wales. The Azusa Street revival was known for the song of the Lord in the midst of the people, the singing in the spirit, hallelujah, that we will not only sing in our understanding, but we will sing in the spirit. And I believe this, I believe that actually the singing in the spirit will begin to take precedence over the song in our understanding. For, for Paul in his writing says this, I will pray in the spirit I will pray in my understanding also I will sing in the spirit I will sing in my understanding also now we do it in reverse we pray in our understanding and sing in our understanding and we also do it a little in the spirit amen but we're going to find the emphasis is going to change and we're going to be praying more in the Spirit, singing more in the Spirit. Hallelujah. There are those sounds that are eternal and God wants to bring them into the midst of the congregation more and more that we will hear those eternal sounds. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus paid the full price at Calvary. Hallelujah. And paying the full price at Calvary, God the Father divided the spoil with him and he in turn divides it with us it was appointed unto him it is divided unto us hallelujah praise the Lord hallelujah he saw the travail of his soul and was satisfied oh hallelujah Praise the Lord. Does that mean that, uh, that uh, it's wrong to travail? No, it's not wrong. It's just not necessary. Amen. There will be still women having babies screaming and hollering all the way. Amen. But in Jerusalem, I used to go into the, into the delivery room. The husband stood on one side. I stood on the other 
we held the hand of whichever girl or lady was going to deliver the baby and we began singing in the spirit we had a Muslim maternity doctor amen obstetrician and uh, and he knew because we had so many babies delivered by him he knew that we were going to be singing in the in tongues and we just quietly started singing in the spirit getting lost in God. All the other babies in that hospital, the Muslim girls, they scream and holler, and you can hear them way outside the, 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 the tremendous travail and labor. But our girls sing in the spirit, Habashi Occasionally you hear a little extra accent, amen. Hey man, hallelujah, as they're singing a little extra accent. Uh, praise the Lord. And we're just singing in the spirit. And in a few minutes, uh, the baby is here. Oh, hallelujah. 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 You might feel a few twitches in the spirit. Uh, but you're not going to have the struggles you've known in the past. Uh, hallelujah. If you move into this realm of the glory of God being manifested. Uh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hashikarabandai. We bless you, O Lord. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. Uh, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong <laughs> out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise hallelujah hallelujah perfected praise is not vocabulary perfected praise is the heart relationship to the mouth amen hallelujah amen you can have the most beautiful praise vocabulary and your heart not be involved but you can say hallelujah 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 and have such a relationship with your heart uh, to your mouth amen hallelujah that that praise is perfected praise oh baba shiandai hallelujah i always tell people that the hallelujahs that i've just said uh, they're not the ones that I've been saying since I was a child. They're brand new created praise for this day's offering unto the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. That little praise machine within me creates it just for today. And I offer it unto him and it becomes a, a sweet smelling savor. Hallelujah. And the next time I need a hallelujah or a glory to God, another one begins to bubble up from the depth of my being. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Lord wants to divide unto us the spoils of Calvary. <laughs> Calvary is not in vain. Hallelujah. And it is not just for a handful. But thank God the multitudes from all over the earth. He wants to divide them with the praisers, amen, with the strong, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, build yourself up continually in praise, in other tongues, in the understanding, praise unto the living God, and sing more than you've ever sung before, some of you are saying, I don't have a voice, it doesn't matter, we had a couple of brothers in Jerusalem, in fact, one was uh, Sister Val's son-in-law. When he first came, he, he was having problems singing, and we had another brother that had problems singing. In fact, the other brother, I've never heard a, a, a young man that had a worse voice anywhere in the world. <clears throat> he had no sense of rhythm and, and just a terrible voice. 
And I used to stand beside him because I felt it was essential that everyone participate. And in prayer meeting or in, in a day-by-day -day capacity, when it came his time and he wanted to lead out, I'd stand beside him and help him do it. And I did that so many times. And, and yet God began to give those two boys exquisite choruses. Several years later, I was in Brisbane at Brother Clark Taylor's church when he was getting ready to dedicate his church. And uh, he was dedicating a church that was running about 5,000 at the time. And he chose, he didn't know what he was choosing, but he chose his three favorite choruses. And all three of them were birthed in that meeting in Jerusalem. And I think two of them were Camille's choruses, and one was uh, Hugh's chorus. And it was these boys that I'd stood beside and patted my toe, amen, uh, uh, until they began to sing, hallelujah, and let and break forth into singing. Purpose in your spirit, you're not only going to sing unto the Lord, uh, but you're going to break forth into song, O oh, Parishia Mai. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Everybody else may be able to sing better than I can, but I'm not going to let them sing my song to my beloved. I'm not going to let them sing my song to the King of Kings. I'm not going to let them sing my love song. I'm going to sing my love song myself unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Lord promises that as I sing, I'm going to be enlarged and I'm going to break forth and the children are going to be added unto me. Oh, Baba Shiandai. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. And our Heavenly Father, we just believe thee this day to minister unto every one of us here. We, Lord, want to be those that know the tremendous victory of the song of the Lord, that the singers and the praisers go before the warriors, and the warriors never need to war. Oh, God, we just declare the song of the Lord in the midst of the people. Lord, these are days that you want to bring forth great strength in the midst of your body. You want to bring in a day of ease that we need not to strive, nor struggle, nor travail, nor labor to enter in into these things. But, Lord, that we will know a new rest, a rest in the Holy Ghost, a rest, hallelujah, that is so eternal. Praise God in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the crowd, in the midst of every circumstance of life. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just lift up our voices a moment. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Could we all gather a little closer? Let's all come down to the altar this morning. Come on in a little closer. Just sing in the spirit. Barisi ala marabako, ala bayaravi. Hasti ala maribi bi bi ara. Oh. 
Everyone lift up your voice and song. Sing in the spirit of the Lord.
here that's got pain across your shoulder right now. Who's that with pain across your shoulder? Amen. Just receive your healing right now in the name of the Lord. Someone else that has pain up in the neck area. Uh, you're having it up in that neck. Amen. Just just let it go. 
Amen. In the name of the Lord, be healed. In the name of the Lord, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Someone else has still has some pain in the shoulder blade area. Who's that? Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. You know where it all comes from. It's tension. That's why we got to sing more. Amen. If we sing more, we'll have less tension. Amen. That's the rest of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Just receive that healing. Receive your healing in the name of the Lord. Receive it. Receive it in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, the Lord's got some special things for your family. <laughs> he said, the desire of the righteous shall be granted. Amen. And I saw that the very petition that you've come to camp meeting to present to the Lord, he's answering it. Amen. The very petition, not another, but the very one you've come with. Hallelujah. God's going to work in your family in such amazing ways. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you go to Brother Kids Church? No. Are you from New York? Where are you from? Oh, you're from Virginia, Concord, Virginia. God bless you. We have a sister here from Trinidad that came in the last couple of days. Where's that nice sister from Trinidad? Hallelujah. Maybe she's not here this morning. Hallelujah. Let's just lift up our voices a little more. Amen. Let the vision of the Lord come unto you. Sister, just come over here. Let me just lay hands on you. Hallelujah. Receive. 